Uh, Alex Hammond is with uh, Alan McCabe at Windsor. Well, Alan, good run for you. How's um, Kasper Netscher, who won at York last week? Yeah, he's come out of the race fine. He's bouncing, actually. Um, he's in good order. He's a canter this morning, and Babu, who rides him, is very happy. Where, any more thoughts where he might go next? No, not, not yet. We're, just, we're, we're quite happy to see it. His next entry is in the Champagne, I think. So, Charles might pop down next week, and we'll have a chat where we go. With the options are, we've got a lot of them here. Good luck with him. It was really exciting win. What about tonight here at Windsor? You've got two runners. Desert Strike in what looks like a really tricky five furlong handicap. Yeah, but he, do, he runs well in these tricky races. Um, he's in good order. I mean, I might be just a bit concerned. I might be too much juice in the ground, but he's here to take his chance anyway. Now, all his wins have been on the all-weather. Does that worry you? Because he is consistently placed on the turf as well. Not at all. If, if everything falls in his favour, he'll win. He will win on the grass. I mean, he's he's been knocking on the door. He's not easy to win with, albeit on the all-weather or the grass. So, um, with a bit of luck, I, I, Johannes can get on with him tonight. Yeah, I do a quick word about him. Johannes Pulis, I think we're pronouncing his name, aren't we? He's a jockey over from Cyprus. Yeah, he's been with me about 10 days on holidays and that and he's, he's been riding out and looking after helping me out so we decided to give him a few rides he goes home to Cyprus tomorrow but he's he's um, so he's going to be coming back during, the, during the winter you know and I see he's ridden classic winners and all sorts over there yeah he's ridden derby winners um, guineas winners and he's he tells me he's been placed in the Oaks three times that's his bogey race well you never know he might get a winner tonight because he also rides follow the flag for you in the last what about this horse's chance follow the flag we gave a break to and he's, he's, he's a very lazy horse at home he's his run last time suggests he's on the way back he's off a nice mark but then again you can't rely on him and the ground might just be a bit on the slow side for him but if everything goes right he should be there about horses are running well good luck thank you very much Runners are uh, loading up here at Windsor. There's been plenty of money uh, for Madame Ishi. He's been back down to 11 to 2 from 9 to 1 in the minutes leading up to the uh, off. You can see Crimson Queen is 3 to 1. Loading well underway. Diva. And uh, 4 to 1 bar. Cookies emailed in from Manchester. Says, imaginary Diva. Don't miss it. I see if you're right in a few moments. Third in this race last year. For, for what the form line is worth. And there she is going forward. Pick and sort was heavily back this morning, actually. 33 to 1 in a few places, down to 8 to 1 on track at the moment here. Brett Johnson and uh, Jimmy Quinn. Not sure how many more there are out the bank, but I think we can go to Jim, calling the last few forward here. Thanks, Darren. I think we're just about ready now. That's it. Set. Stand. Racing. And Desert Strike missed it slightly. Cape Royal was slow tonight. In the centre, first away is Madame Ishii going fast. Dan Zoe. Patch Patch has just eased in behind them. Who ate all the pious began well. Goes up to join the leaders. And driving through on the stands rail now, Kieran Fallon on Cape Royal to take it up narrowly from Madame Ishii and Who ate all the pious. Just in behind them is Dan Zoe as they settle. Further back in the field, Imaginary Diva followed a little bit wider out by Pick and Sort. Further back in the field, then Leadenhall last the centre from Patch Patch and further back then Crimson Queen giving them a big start and right out the back is Desert Strike two furlongs left to travel now and Cape Royal up against the stands rail in the centre is Madame Ishi a little bit wider out who ate all the pious pick and sort coming there as well almost a line of five now as Imaginary Diva is now forcing through on the stands rail it's Madame Ishi just the leader now on the far side Desert Strike sprouting wings Desert Strike going home best of all Desert Strike gets up to win it from Madame Ishi, tight third. Uh, imaginary Diva in that uh, in company uh, there with who ate all the pious pick and sort and also Patch Patch who finished well. Uh, that's behind them, Leadenhall, that's Crimson. Well, Yanis Pulis may be going back to Cyprus tomorrow, but he goes back with a winner under his belt. Desert Strike getting his head in front again for Alan McCabe. Really consistent performer, this horse. Um, all seven wins prior to tonight had been on the all-weather, but he hadn't looked too badly handicapped, and I didn't get the best of luck last time out. Certainly got it here, and this was his 32nd run this season, or this year, I should say. So he's a horse who takes his racing really well, and that must be a real thrill. He may have ridden 
classic winners over in Cyprus, but I should think to ride a British winner here as well, against the likes of Sylvester de Souza and Kieran Fallon, and the like, is a, is a proper buzz for Yanis Poulis, and he can go home with that tail. Of course, he rides another one in the last as well, but a nice performance by this desert strike who got a good run up there, didn't he, uh, to beat Madame Ishii. would just uh, confirm the full result for you, so desert strike wins. Madame Ishii was second, number 12. Third, number 11. Third was number 11, Imaginary Diva, so she's run well again. And Patch Patch finished in fourth. It was really close for the minor honours there as well, wasn't it? But Desert Strike has struck for Yanis Poulis. Let's get the SP. Cancel his fly at home. Let him stay a bit longer. He's done very well there, hasn't he? Right on the outside for uh, Alan McCabe. And as uh, Alex says, a, a ride in the last as well. 8-1 to one this winner, Desert Strike. Madame Ishi 5-1, to one. Imaginary Diva back in third. As per last year, at four to one, ten of them ran without numbers one and ten. So Hereford is coming up. It's 16 miles from the Welsh border. Eight to one is uh, Abigeldi. Nine's Kenskell. Ten to one bar. Yanis Poulis, the Cypriot jock, has had a winner tonight. He's looking for a double. Congratulations, Yanis. That first winner in Britain. Yeah, it's my third time I riding here, so I'm very happy about this. Uh, Thanks, Mr. Alan, for helping me and my manager in Cyprus, Savas Savas. Thanks, everything for all. Waiting, waiting. I'm very happy. How many race courses have you ridden at here in Britain? Uh, two more in uh, Grey Yarmouth and Thirsk. And how do they compare to Nicosia? What? How do they compare to your track at home? Your race course at home. Do, can, uh, is it much different? Yeah, it's different. Yeah. Yeah, it's very different. It's like the American style. Yeah. So here it's very different. Now, uh, Alan said that he left it to you, he didn't tell you where to go, and he's saying you did a very good job coming up the middle of the track. Did, did, yeah, did you yeah. think the best ground was there? Yeah, it's good, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And of course, at home, you ride on an all-weather surface, on dirt, is it? Uh, like a sand surface at home? Yeah, 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 yeah sand. Yeah. Yeah. And one more ride here, so are you looking forward to maybe having another winner? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us about yourself at home. How many winners have you ridden in Cyprus? In Cyprus, I have uh, 550 winners. Uh, maybe 45 cup race, Derby, 1,000 Guinness, 2,000 Guinness, every winners I have in Cyprus. And will you be coming back to Britain? We'll see. <laughs> I try. And do you, do you want to go anywhere else in the world? Have you ridden in America or Australia? I tried to go in America in the last year, but I'm not lucky. I have accident in the race, so everything is lost. So, but I like England. <laughs> well, we like you. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Super. That was great. Set. They're racing. On key got away okay. And also Kalinka's lad was quickly into stride and just dropping in behind them early as South Cape. Uh, Ken's girl began well on the outside, is going to lead them early by two or three lengths to Kalinka's lad is right up there. Also vying for a handy posse willow dancer and round one out very wide. On key driving through and about fifth on the inside from Moynihan and Abigeldi the centre. Miss Bootylicious is further back as they settle fully into stride. The leader though on set down is Kalinka's lad on the inside from Ken's girl and they're going helter skelter three or four lengths clear of Willow Dancer in third followed then by round one on key just behind them half a length to Abigeldi two lengths then to Moynihan is further back in the field Miss Bootylicious giving them a fair start Galliando is right out the back early as they steady going around that corner also back there is South Cape with the caterers and some way detached from them is follow the flag Ken's girl heads up for home just the leader but now tackled by Kalinka's lad who goes to a narrow lead. Three away then on the inside as Willow Dancer as they straighten up. A length away then is uh, round one with a white cap and the nose band uh, just a little bit uh, off the uh, stands rail. Then the black colours of Onki as they pass the half mile from Moynihan and Abigeldi two lengths to Miss Bootylicious and further back South Cape and giving them a long start. Galliando with about ten lengths to make up but now setting sail out after these leaders. And it's Ken's girl the leader as they drift out towards the centre once again. Willow Dancer I think it is who stitch, sticks to the stands rail but it's Ken's girl who's veering towards that far side two or three lengths clear of Kalinka's ladders given ground now followed then by Miss Bootylicious who's out after the leader Galliando is also running on very well up the stands rail but it's uh, now on key who's coming through. On key on the near side. Galliando the far side. They settle down to fight it out with a half furlong to go. Galliando's pulling a bit more out on the far side 
and Galliando, big performance to get up and win from on key in second. The caterers maybe third, just ahead of Briss Bootylicious, tight there. A gap then to Ken's girl, Abigail, followed then by Moyna. And then South Cape.